Humans have long been fascinated with the idea of life in other worlds. With the advent of the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful telescope in existence, scientists now have the opportunity to explore the closest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, which is only four light years away. While studying this system, scientists have observed unusual anomalies on one of its planets, Proxima b. These anomalies, known as artificial lights, have puzzled the scientific community. What do these lights mean? Could they be evidence of intelligent life on the planet? Join us as we delve into the James Webb Telescope's groundbreaking discovery of city lights that could change everything we know about the universe. As far as we know, life on Earth is the only life in the universe. Throughout history, people have wondered if there is life elsewhere. To explore this possibility, American astronomers Jill Tata and Thomas Peterson established the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI, project in 1984. SETI is a nonprofit organization that aims to detect space borne radio signals as a way of searching for extraterrestrial life. Radio waves can travel faster than other types of radiation, making them more likely to be detected by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the Allen Telescope Array in the Californian Cascade Mountains. However, despite decades of searching, no definitive evidence of alien life has been found. The James Webb Space Telescope, recently launched and currently orbiting roughly a million miles from Earth, will play a major role in the search for undiscovered planets orbiting distant stars. As the most powerful telescope in the world, it is equipped with highly sensitive detectors that will allow scientists to explore a vast range of distant celestial bodies. 20 years ago, scientists were aware of only the planets in our solar system, but since then, over 4,000 exoplanets have been discovered orbiting other stars. According to NASA, there may be trillions of exoplanets in the universe. Scientists may be able to find evidence of extraterrestrial plant life by searching for a specific biosignature known as the Vegetation Red Edge, or VRE. The VRE is a combination of red and infrared light reflected by plants and was first detected by the Galileo spacecraft when it was en route to Jupiter. A planet with a large amount of vegetation, like a jungle-covered Earth, would have a strong and easily detectable VRE signal. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, will be able to measure the VRE of distant Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars. The presence of VRE in the atmosphere of these exoplanets could be an important sign of life. The James Webb Space Telescope may be able to detect the presence of life on distant planets by analyzing the light that passes through the planet's atmosphere. As sunlight crosses a planet's star and enters its atmosphere, scientific wavelengths of light may be absorbed by atoms and molecules in the atmosphere, creating a unique fingerprint that the JWST can recognize through spectroscopy. This method can be used to determine the composition of a planet's atmosphere and assess whether life is possible on the planet. On Earth-sized planets with atmospheres similar to our own, which are composed mainly of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide, the presence of certain elements that are not usually present could indicate the presence of technologically advanced life. For example, the JWST could detect the presence of chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs, which are used in refrigeration and cleaning products as a clear indication of civilization on a distant planet. It is important to note that life on exoplanets may not resemble life on Earth in any way. Even forms of life that are similar to those found on Earth can seem alien to us. For example, there are certain groups of organisms, primarily bacteria, that can survive in extreme environments where other forms of life would not be able to. Some bacteria can endure temperatures as high as 250 degrees Fahrenheit or as low as negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. And some can survive in acidic environments with pH levels as low as 3. While there are organisms like this on Earth, they can be found in places where we would not expect to find any life at all. 
However, it would be wise to start with looking for life on planets that are similar to Earth, as they are more likely to support life than planets with severe temperatures or acidic conditions. In the search for life on other planets, scientists are looking for planets that have temperatures that allow liquid water to exist on their surface and orbit a stable star. The Sun is classified as a yellow G-type star, which are less common and typically have shorter lives. However, there is a likelihood of studying planets orbiting around red dwarf stars, which are more frequent and have lower luminosities and temperatures than the Sun. These stars have longer lifespans, which would give more time for the formation of life and evolution to produce complex life forms. One example is the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system, located around 40 light years away from Earth, which will be the subject of the James Webb Space Telescope's first mission. The system revolves around a calm red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets, three of which are located in the so-called habitable zone and might have liquid water on their surfaces. Despite the TRAPPIST-1 star being much smaller and colder than the Sun, it radiates light that is similar to that of Earth due to the close orbit of its planets. The best chance for humans to observe city lights on an exoplanet is on Proxima Centauri b, a planet that orbits Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light years away from the Sun and is the closest star to Earth. Proxima Centauri is much dimmer than the Sun, therefore a planet would have to be 20 times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun in order to support life based on liquid water. In August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet with 1.3 Earth masses in this habitable region in a Goldilocks-like habitable zone where the light intensity is just right to melt water. It is possible that Proxima b is an airless and lifeless planet, given that it orbits its red dwarf star, Proxima Centauri, at a distance of only 4.6 million miles. Keep in mind that the distance between the Sun and the Earth is 93 million kilometers. The planet Proxima b is in a close orbit that exposes it to strong solar winds that can completely destroy its atmosphere. However, its close proximity to the star also provides enough sunlight for temperatures and liquid water that are similar to those on Earth. Because of its close proximity to the star, Proxima b is thought to be tidally locked, always showing the same side to the star as the moon does in reference to Earth. Proxima Centauri is about an eighth the mass of the sun and burns far less brightly than one might anticipate for a planet so near to its star, just 5% of the Earth's sun distance. It may be anticipated to be a red-hot cinder, but liquid water could easily exist on Proxima b as long as the planet has an atmosphere to hold heat in, since the total energy reaching it from the Sun is only 65% of what Earth receives. Despite the potential for liquid water on Proxima b, the planet is not considered to be particularly hospitable to life. It is most likely tidal locked, meaning it always faces the same direction towards its star, resulting in permanent day and night cycles with significant temperature changes. The planet also receives a hundred times more high energy radiation than Earth because of its proximity to Proxima Centauri, including X-rays and ultraviolet light. Additionally, Proxima b is also bombarded with high energy particles during star flare-ups, the planet would require a shielding magnetic field similar to Earth's in order to protect any potential life from this radiation. While there may be certain conditions that, that could make Proxima b a potentially habitable world, models suggest that the atmosphere of tidally locked planets like Proxima b may be susceptible to a rapid collapse due to the freezing out of volatile gases on the night side. On Earth, our atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape. However, since we do not know anything about Proxima b's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength, it is impossible to know if the planet has an atmosphere. 
An atmosphere presupposes the existence of seas, and the two taken together presuppose the existence of life. Therefore, scientists are eager to know if Proxima b has a sophisticated civilization, as it might have solar panels covering the day side to generate electricity to light and warm the night side, which would otherwise be too cold and dark for comfortable habitation. The discovery of Proxima b has sparked a race to determine if it passes in front of its star as seen from Earth. These transits would allow scientists to determine the planet's size and mass, which would in turn enable them to determine its density. This information would confirm the planet's rocky composition and provide insight into the materials used to create those rocks. Additionally, during a transit, the light from the star passing through the planet's atmosphere may reveal information about the planet's atmosphere. However, the likelihood of the planet's orbit being in the right alignment for scientists to observe a transit is only 1.5%. Additionally, the star's tendency to flare also adds complexity to the situation. According to astronomer David Kipping of Columbia University, the star is tricky because its heat causes a rocky planet to absorb sunlight and re-emit it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a distinct type of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Furthermore, the James Webb Space Telescope was designed specifically to study infrared light, which makes it an ideal tool for studying Proxima b. Proxima b's infrared heat signature is crucial in identifying the planet's atmosphere. Additionally, the infrared portion of the spectrum is a strong match for JWST, which may be able to observe city lights on Proxima b's night side even if they are as faint as what our civilization currently uses on the night side of Earth. The JWST can detect artificial illumination as long as it's confined to a frequency band that is 1,000 times narrower than the starlight. The day side of Proxima b may also be heavily coated with solar panels because of its unique spectral edges ability to reflect starlight. As Proxima b revolves around its star, day and night are identical with cool evening lows following daytime highs. The difference in temperature between day and night, however, depends on whether the planet is entirely composed of bare rock, as atmosphere and ocean both conduct heat. In simpler terms, if there isn't an atmosphere, Proxima b's day and night side temperatures will differ greatly. Since the day side will re-emit all of the energy it receives from Proxima Centauri as a black body, scientists can calculate the precise amount of black body radiation that should be present. On the other hand, the night side will look like a frozen wasteland. If the temperature difference between day and night is less pronounced, it can indicate the presence of an atmosphere. Conveniently, the JWST will only take 11.2 Earth days to measure the IR radiation from Proxima b's two faces after it has completed its orbit around the star. If Proxima b has an atmosphere, the next step will be to analyze its composition. The presence of gases like oxygen, water vapor, and methane in particular could indicate the existence of habitable conditions, if not actual living things. However, Capturing starlight as it bounces off or travels through the planet's atmosphere is a very difficult task. The James Webb Space Telescope can only closely examine a few of the closest potentially habitable worlds because it was not designed to look for extraterrestrial life. Additionally, it is limited to tracking changes in the atmospheric concentrations of methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor, and it cannot detect the presence of unbounded oxygen which is the strongest indication of life. Even if some mixtures of these gases may be suggestive of life, one of the planned ground-based observatories that will be able to conduct a thorough atmospheric investigation is the Extremely Large Telescope, or ELT, which is scheduled to begin operation in the mid-2020s. Ozone may be among the substances that the James Webb Space Telescope is able to detect. Until more powerful telescopes become operational, the JWST may provide information that can be considered for the next decade. In the future, even more advanced space telescopes may employ cutting-edge techniques to block the intense brightness of a planet's host star.
and reveals starlight reflected back from the planet. This could be done by using small internal masks or large external umbrella-shaped satellites to block the starlight. Once starlight is blocked, studying light reflecting off a planet becomes much easier. Unfortunately, many gases can be produced by both terrestrial life and non-biological factors. For example, methane is a gas that can be produced both by cows and volcanoes, and sunlight can also produce it by converting water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen through photosynthesis. While searching for alien life, astronomers are likely to encounter some false positives. To determine if a planet is potentially habitable, they must have a thorough understanding of its geological and atmospheric processes and be able to distinguish them from potential biosignatures. The next phase of exoplanet research may produce the convincing evidence required to establish the existence of life. The James Webb Space Telescope's initial data offers a glimpse of the significant advancements that are yet to come. The question of whether life exists elsewhere in the cosmos is one of the most pressing in science. It's possible that life is abundant throughout the cosmos, or it's also possible that we are the only living beings in the universe. Regardless of the outcome, significant philosophical and psychological adjustments among people will likely be necessary for the eventual resolution. What do you think? Will we find life on other planets in our current lifetime? Will we ever get to experience it? Comment your thoughts below! Thank you so much for watching the video! Don't miss out on our latest uploads! If you wish to stay up to date with the latest space updates and discoveries, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and turn on all notifications to see more of our latest videos in the future.